Let's go live. Mm -mm. Hey, what's going on? Hey, everyone. Yeah, shout out to everyone that's on Twitch and Twitter. We were already live there. Just, a, you know, a little something before we go live here. Today, we have a very sensitive topic, a documentary. I love documentaries. And as you already know, normally we go live and we recap Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, but that's officially over. I did just post a quick video on my TikTok and on Reels about Anna Marie Wiley announcing that she will not be returning next season. She has not been asked back and she has said that that is a disappointment. That is a disappointment. I don't know if you feel like that's a disappointment, but be sure to check that out on TikTok or on Reels about me addressing uh, the news that Anna Marie Wiley won't be returning to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills for season 14. So that leaves an open spot or maybe not, or maybe not. So as I said before, I normally um, recap Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. However, I did last night start the documentary on Max. It's also available on the ID channel, Quiet on the Set. Quiet on the Set. Have you guys seen this yet? I did post about it. Quiet on the Set, the dark side of kids TV. Basically, it's really just talking about Dan Schneider, talking about some of the predators that were found on the Nickelodeon lot. Throughout this four-part documentary, they are <laughs> constantly giving you disclaimers that they reached out to Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon um, sent them a statement talking about their workplace environment and, and the, what they achieve, uh, what they're trying to achieve in those workplace environments. So I'm going to take it part by part. Of course, we're not going to be able to cover every single nitty-gritty detail because it's like almost four-hour documentary. But I did... This morning, wake up early just so I can kind of rewatch part one, part two, part three, part four. And I even watched Dan Schneider's interview that he posted on his YouTube channel and that The Hollywood Reporter got a, got their hands on uh, exclusively. It's like a 20, less than 20 minute interview that he's interviewed by some. First of all, he's interviewed by a former iCarly a, uh, actor. And of course, he happens to be black, of course, because that's talked about in this four-part documentary. Have you guys watched it? Let me know in the live chat. And for those that are watching the replay, be sure to let me know your thoughts on this four-part documentary. If you haven't, you can watch it on Max. I'm sure you can watch it probably on the Discovery Plus app, but I watched it on the Max app. They're all owned by the same company, but yeah. Anyways, let's get into our recap of Quiet on the Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. Won't you listen to me? I got that flavor. I know you're dying to feed. I ain't no dancer. Just got some hip in my feet. Now throw your hands up. Ooh, you bring the lighter. I got the fuse. You make a fire. I'll add the fuel. Follow my lead. Just watch the shoes. Gotta turn the heat up to get this cool. Welcome back to the Campire channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. As always, don't forget to like the video, don't forget to share the video, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget you can also take us on the go by downloading the Campire podcast on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. While you're there, don't forget to give us a five-star rating because those ratings really do matter, really do matter. And you know what also matters? my energy and my health. As you know, doing live shows can be a lot. And when I say live shows, I'm not just talking about YouTube. Also, we're on the Kempire After Dark live tour uh, this this year. And my health is so important. I told you I've been making strides when it comes to my mental health, but also my physical health. And simplicity is important with a busy schedule. And I'm sure a lot of you have, have busy schedules. You have your kids. So I gave AG1 a try. You all have been asking me about AG1. And I gave them a try because I wanted to focus on making sure that I'm getting the proper vitamins. 
I uh, literally just had a conversation with my my nutritionist about AG1 and if I was getting all of the vitamins that I needed. And she was actually impressed with AG1 and their ingredients. So I have been able to eliminate a lot of all these other su supplements by just drinking AG1. OK, uh, since drinking AG1 daily, I feel more energized. You know, I do Pilates. I'm active. I'm working out. I'm touring. It has helped. It has greatly helped in giving me more energy. Also, just the satisfaction hearing from my, my nutritionist that, yeah, you're getting all the vitamins that you need from from this. So that's because AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that, so, that supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. So since 2010, AG1 has led the future of foundational nutrition, continuously refining their formula to create a smarter, better way to elevate your baseline health. All right? So here's the other thing, because I'm big on gut health. Some important ingredients within AG1 include prebiotics, probiotics, and digestive enzymes for gut support. I don't think people realize how important your gut support is to your overall health. All right. So I recommend AG1 to my friends and family. Like I said to you guys before, we've collaborated with them over the last year or so and most recently. So be sure to check out some of the details about that in the description. I've been really, really, really happy with it. So if there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. And that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a returning partner here on the Kempire channel. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase and at drinkag1.com slash Kempire. Again, that's drinkag1.com slash Kempire. Check out for more details in the description. And thank you to AG1 for sponsoring today's live show. All right. Shout out to everyone in the live chat. We appreciate you all being here for our special live show in, in regards to this documentary on Max. All right. But I do want to give you guys a trigger warning just because we are going to be talking about very sensitive topics, of course, because of community guidelines. I will be abbreviating words, not going into the nitty gritty details of what is shared, but I still want to give you a trigger warning because you just never know talking about shows that a lot of you grew up on. A lot of you grew up on. As soon as I saw this man's face, I said, wait, for if you're of a particular age, you know who Dan Schneider is because you, you may recall him from Head of the Class with Robin Givens. You guys remember that? I had no idea that this was the same man. I didn't know that this was this was a, a guy behind the scenes over at Nickelodeon. I have to also keep in mind, a lot of you said that you are a Nickelodeon kid. I don't consider myself a Nickelodeon kid, all right? Because you had to have cable to be a Nickelodeon kid. <laughs> I don't remember the year that I got cable, but technically it was my sister who had gotten cable in her bedroom. So that was where we would watch cable if we wanted to see cable. I grew up on watching those regular, ch regular, regular ch channels that we could afford. Uh, okay. That, we didn't have Nickelodeon like that. So I was watching TGIF, anything that was on the main channels that were for free. But eventually we did end up getting cable. Okay, we eventually, but yeah. All right. I, I just wanted to point that out because I, I saw a lot of people's comments after watching Quiet on the set saying, oh yeah, I was a Nickelodeon kid. I grew up on... I think in the era of like the 2000, oh God, here we go with the, uh, going back to what, um, what's, what's Dre and Michelle's boyfriend's name? Something Green. I can't remember. Uh, Jalen Green. Uh, something else that, look, here's where I would be taught by Jalen Green because this was his era. Well, technically, because he was born in the 2000s, so 2002 to be specific. But here's the thing. I, I don't consider myself a Nickelodeon kid. I know of a lot of the shows, but when you think about the Ariana Grande's, the, the folks that kind of grew up in this era, the Amanda Bynes, that's not my era. That's definitely not my era, but of course I knew who they were, okay? 
Um, but I just wanted to point that out. All right, XC, thank you, Patricia. I I wanted to point that out because I know there are people that can relate. Like. I don't consider myself a Nickelodeon kid. I knew of the shows. I couldn't tell you chapter and verse, but if you didn't have cable, you couldn't watch it. <laughs> it was all about, you know, the, the main channels, PBS, Sesame Street, all those those things, TGIF, those things. Uh, watching, you know, Martin and things like that on, on those things, even though Martin's a grown show. Um, but you get what I'm saying, though. So I just wanted to point that out before we get into this. But of course, watching this documentary quiet on the set didn't mean I didn't know who the cast of characters were. But I didn't know that Dan Schneider was the mastermind behind a lot of the popular shows. I didn't know all that. Did I watch all that chapter and verse? No. But I did know it. I loved it. And it really was ahead of its time when it comes to the concept. It was really taking that whole in living color or that... Um, you know, Saturday Night Live concept and making it towards kids. And he found out a lot, uh, there were a lot of really talented people that we get to know today. Keenan and Kel, we know from, from all that. And then they had their own show, okay? So there's a lot of accusations. There's a lot of predators that are, I can't believe there was at least three predators that were documented in this documentary, all right? Again, if you haven't watched it, again, a trigger warning, it's heavy stuff. It's heavy stuff. So I do want to take it episode by episode, and I will be dropping the call-in link for you guys to call in and share your thoughts if you want to call in about the documentary that's available on Max. That's where I watch it. I'm sure there's other places you can watch it on the ID channel and things like that. All right. So where do I want to start? Let's just start with episode one, because episode one doesn't delve into the Drake Bell of it all. We get into that, I think, by like episode three is when we are introduced to Drake Bell and his story and the Brian Peck of it all. Oh, I can't tell you. I, oh, I felt I felt so bad for, for Drake Bell. But I also felt bad for these two female writers. They were the only two female writers that were working with Dan Schneider. So Dan Schneider started on Head of the Class. He actually co-wrote the pilot for Head of the Class. All right? And that spearheaded a big opportunities for him in Hollywood. All right? He never went to Harvard. His father went to Harvard. But in I guess in his bio it says that he, went, he attended Harvard. He never did. Okay? But he seemingly created a career and became, became like the, the god of Nickelodeon because of all of the hit shows that he created for them. And despite losing a lawsuit to these two, well, to one of the female writers that reported him, first of all, them telling their stories, you can see in one of the ladies that she's still triggered by it. She still doesn't tell us everything that happened. At one point, she they were telling a story about her. I don't even know if I can say this, but if you watch the documentary, then you you know the story that I'm talking about. She seemed so embarrassed that she even she confirms it, but she didn't want to even get into the details of this embarrassing story that Dan Schneider allegedly made her do. First of all, these two female two female writers had to share had to share a salary in the interview that Dan Schneider did on his YouTube channel. He, where he got a former iCarly uh, actor to interview him and ask these questions, but it felt very performative, honestly. And throughout the documentary, Dan Schneider does answer to certain things that are he's accused of throughout the documentary. And you don't see him, they're written statements in the documentary, okay? So, um, the two female writers were there. And they talk about their abuses, the things that they, they had experienced while working with Dan Schneider. Okay? One of them is eventually fired. The other lady only lasts maybe a... I forgot how many weeks. First of all, they had given her a contract, I believe, for 16 weeks. And basically wanted her to work for 11 weeks free. So she was working technically for 27 weeks, but she would only be contracted for 16 weeks. We got to keep in mind, these folks are in Hollywood. They're a part of this show. They want this opportunity. She said she recalls an incident where, first of all, he never found women funny, which is something that is said a lot in the world of comedy and entertainment about women not being funny. 
And apparently Dan made it very known. He didn't think women were funny. He didn't respect them. And there were a lot of derogatory things. The poor lady that ended up being fired first, he 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 had um he challenged her to eat like all this ice cream within a certain period of time, and she did, and she ended up getting sick. But he promised to pay her like three hundred dollars if she did it. She never did it. Only for later for them to him to ask to do another challenge, and she was and she makes a joke. She's like, "I'll just add it to your tab." He didn't like that. He's like, you're trying to make it seem like I don't pay on my on my um on my debts or or whatever the term term he used. She ends up getting fired for something else because apparently when you're a writer for him, you have to be on the clock all the time. And apparently, you know, one weekend she went away or something like that. They end up firing her. They keep the other young lady on. She only lasts a, a week. A week. Because First of all, I guess they're in the writer's room creating ideas. He calls all the men into his office to discuss some ideas and keeps her out, then eventually calls her in. When he calls her in, he insinuates that she worked for, you know, one of those hotlines, read in between the lines, one of those hotlines. He's like, did you tell us you worked for one of those, those hotlines? She's like, no, I never told you that, Dan. I never told you that. And she said, just the, can you just imagine the, the scenario that we're talking about? All these male writers are around the room. She's the only female writer. The other female writer that at least she had that other female writer before is no longer there. This man's insinuating something that never, first of all, something that might be like, um, first of all, I never did that. What are you perpetuating in front of these, my colleagues so that they don't respect me? And she said she couldn't do it. She couldn't do it. Sidebar, even before this, Homegirl was already researching and reached out to the Writers Guild in regards to the, the both of them sharing one salary. And the Writers Guild told her that that's not appropriate. So they were in touch with the powers that be over at Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider about it. Dan calls this woman up at her home and was just like, did you, were you the one that, that did this? And she never said if she... I'm, I'm assuming she denied it to him. But but of course, with his influence and his power, basically they said, you'll never work in this town again if you turn me in. Not denying it. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Miss, Miss B says four days. It wasn't even a week. It wasn't even a week. I can't remember. Please understand, guys. This is a four-part documentary. I'm not going to remember every single detail of what is said here. Please understand that. But thank you so much for that. So feel free to fill in what I, I might um, not say. Okay? All right. Uh, KB says she, de uh, she denied it. Of course she probably denied it because, look, but after only working four days of that next season, she was like, I'm, I'm out of here. I can't. I can't work in, under these conditions. However... Mind you, this happened years, years before. He, he continues to work for Nickelodeon and has multiple shows. She files a lawsuit against him. She gets her former other female writer to corroborate what, what her accusations. She, I guess they quietly settled this, this lawsuit. Her hope is that after filing this lawsuit that no one ever, uh, no other female writer has to deal with a Dan Schneider only for Dan Schneider to continue to work with the network. So the network knew about these accusations. They knew about these accusations years ago, but they went on to work with him for how many more years after that? Because at the end of the, at the, end of the day, these networks are more focused on their bottom line, which is money, which is money. All right, so that's like episode one where they're talking a lot about that, um, the early years of Dan Schneider. For those that are just joining us, we're talking about the new documentary on Max and the ID channel called Quiet on the Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. It's really focused more so, though, on this man, Dan Schneider, who created so many massive hits for Nickelodeon hits that he's probably still, not probably, he's still making money off of. He's still making money off of that are repeating on Nickelodeon. Shows like Ike Harley, Drake and Josh, um, uh, Victorious. Like all of what made Nickelodeon what they have. 
Okay, that's in episode one in regards to the environment that Dan Schneider created on set. So there, there's a lot, and there's there's a lot of references that now people are looking at that these young children were doing, like terms that they were using, props that they were using, just innuendos that were very adult-like, very adult-like. I mean, a lot of this can be said about other folks as well and other networks as well. I will say this, based off of watching this diet documentary, I'm not going to lie to you guys. The first thing that came to mind, especially when they talk, I think it's like in episode three, and they, they say that the kids, they have this scene with, with Dan Schneider, and he calls in, sort of like he's calling in his angels, like Charlie's angels, and they refer to him as a god. As you know, we've been talking about what's been going on with NBC Universal, Bravo, and Andy Cohen. I literally just was like, oh my God, this sounds like the situation. And I'm not accusing Andy of the same behavior, but what I'm saying is the scenario of making one particular person that brings a lot of money to a network and then referring to him as a God, you know, that's, that's, they call Andy, Father Andy, Daddy Andy, things like that. Again, Andy Cohen right now is facing accusations from Leah McSweeney, Brandy Glanville, and a couple of other folks in these lawsuits. However, um, I'm telling you, watching this, that's the first thing that came to mind. I was like, oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. You know, we talked about this recently as well in regards to some of the accusations that were found in the Leah McSweeney um, lawsuit as well. But... This happens with a lot of people. I think because Andy Cohen is the face, the face of, of Bravo, we see him. But there are other people behind the scenes. A lot, I don't know if a lot of people know that behind the scenes that there are certain executives. Like, I don't, I don't know if a lot of people know that Dan Schneider was the man behind a lot of this. However, at the Kids' Choice Awards, he was celebrated not too long ago. All right? All right. So that, that's episode one. All right, so before we get into episode two, and I will be dropping the call link for you guys to call in. If you haven't already, um, be sure to like the video. If you're listening to this, don't forget to give us a five-star rating. We're talking about the Max documentary, Quiet on the Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. Danielle, thank you so much for the super chat. Danielle says, my Nickelodeon only consisted of, oh, I do remember Double Dare. I do remember Double Dare. I mean, I remember all the shows. I, I really do. Even though I didn't get to watch all of them, but yeah. And I even tried out for the show. What? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> wow. Thank you, Nicole, so much for the super chat. Nicole says, you are a true gem, Kempire. Thank you for reporting. Thank you so much, Nicole. We appreciate your support as well. All right. So back to this. So back to this, guys. Let's talk about episode two, because we have a lot more to cover. And like I said before, I will be dropping the call and link for the audience, our members first, and then, of course, the general audience to share their thoughts on this four-part documentary. So in episode two, they talk about Amanda Bynes. So as you know, Amanda Bynes, she, we've seen a lot of Amanda Bynes most recently with the conservatorship with her family her mental health struggles and things like that. But they talk about the rise of Amanda Bynes in this um, documentary. Oh, man, I thought I had a picture of Amanda here. Hold on. Where's my picture of Amanda? Um, it's okay. You guys know what Amanda looks like. But I wanted to show my picture of Amanda. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. Anyways, so Amanda Bynes, they show how she started on the show, how young she was, but how talented she was. One of the other actresses talks about how she sort of aged out of, of being on Nickelodeon, meaning that at one point the producers were talking about how much weight she gained. I think her name was Katrina, Katrina something. Talking about how much weight she gained, but then, of course, she went through puberty and she became more developed. So they basically pushed her out she and they pushed her out of being dan schneider's favorite because very manipulative in a way she talked about how when she first auditioned he was always there from the very beginning and he she sort of became his protege only for amanda Bynes to come in and pretty much replace her but if you look at some of the old footage of amanda Bynes, you see how incredibly talented she was as you know because of mental health struggles and things like that i believe 
Amanda also made a very conscious decision. I've made my money. I don't want to work in this business anymore because of what she may have experienced. And I did not realize how much of how her parents, specifically her father, was involved in her career during that time. And it kind of makes me look at them with the side eye. Remember, they were also the conservators over her when she was still in the conservatorship. She's no longer in a conservatorship. Thank you, uh, Anto. Anto says, Katrina Johnson equals Amanda Bynes. So that uh, Katrina was replaced by, uh, by uh, Amanda because she was cuter, younger, and like a little girl again. Uh, K-Baby said he promised uh, Katrina a show as well, only for Amanda Bynes to end up getting her own show, which catapulted her. And, of course, like any star... Wanted to, Amanda wanted to move away from just being the Nickelodeon kid and then ended up getting this sort of like crossover show, which Dan had hoped would be sort of like his crossover, only for him to have a lot of friction with his co-creator of that show. Dan, throughout the documentary, when asked about certain things and what he's accused of, in the particular about being kicked off sets and things like that, he downplays that and that, that was my choice or I had nothing to do with salaries, or I had nothing to do with um, p particular hirings because he's been accused of, with the, the uh, two writers, he was like, I had nothing to do with the salaries. All right. Um, <clears throat> so we talk a lot about Amanda Bynes. Amanda Bynes, speaking of her family, you may recall uh, there was an era where a lot of child stars were emancipating themselves from their parents. So Amanda apparently were having issues with her family. Mind you, she's a teenager. Teenagers have issues with their family, but somehow she got this idea of becoming emancipated. It fails. It fails. But because Dan Schneider, and he says in his own interview that it wasn't just him, it was a bunch of people within Amanda's team that helped her with this, um, cons this um, emancipation. It didn't work. But because of that, it caused a rift between Dan Schneider and Amanda Bynes' parents. So they talk a lot about that. Um, what else did I want to say in regards to the Amanda Bynes situation? Yeah, I talked about the scene with them calling, with Dan calling the cast and things like that. I just want to make sure I'm covering everything episode by episode before jumping ahead. All right. Brian, can we talk about this actor, Brian, who was on all that? This Brian, uh, we're here, Brian Hearn. So Brian Hearn and his mom. So there were a lot of parents on set, which I know a lot of people are like, how are parents on set? And they're allowing some of the things that we're seeing now, now that we watch back some of the stuff that we that we're watching back. Like, how are parents on set? Well, Brian's mom, she was on set and she was very outspoken. But let me tell you something that broke my heart, because when Brian wasn't asked to come back for another season, he was heartbroken. And his mom, Tracy, I believe her name was, is she recalls she recalls in that moment she she saw a change in her son. She also noticed that the change in her son affected their relationship in a way that cannot that you can't even come back from. That part of the documentary broke my heart because we're talking about entertainment. We're talking about, you know, acting and, and, and things like that. But for this situation to drastically affect their relationship, I, I need a follow up. I need to know, have you guys sort of resolved this through therapy? Well, it broke my heart because some of the actors that we're seeing on this show are no longer in the business and don't want to be in the business because of what they experienced. But they also recall on, they talk, they touch in this documentary on how black actors were treated on these types of shows and how Brian was sort of depicted in certain scenes, almost like why are you having the black kid, you know, almost act as if he is a drug dealer of some sort. Or, you know, when he was dressed up as the youngest, as the youngest rapper of all time, as a fetus, just the connotations and the 
phallic things that are happening throughout this documentary is really, really disturbing. Disturbing. There's a lot of like sick things that 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 were working in Dan Schneider's head that people now look back on and they're like, what were you thinking? And why didn't anyone else notice this? Like when they were talking about, I don't know if I can even say this on, on YouTube, so I'm not going to even say it, but there was a character's name, but he, you know, within the, the group, they, 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 they knew what he was referring to. But when executives were asked about this, you know, is this, and they're like, no, oh, I can say it like this. Um, we're talking about when you taint something, when something's not, and I was just like, oh, like there's a lot of little examples throughout this documentary where you're seeing young kids do adult jokes or just phallic symbols and uh, people were alleging that Dan Schneider may have been obsessed with feet. Even some of the things that you see with Ariana Grande. I wonder what Ariana Grande feels about this documentary because I'm sure she knows about it. I'm sure they reached out, reached out for her to be a part of it. Obviously, she's not going to. And look, we have to keep in mind, Dan Schneider has not been accused of any sort of abuse towards children. He was let go because of accusations of, of creating a hostile, abusive work environment. OK, um, but other people, other people, at least three people were accused of harming children while working um, over at Nickelodeon. And. Before we get into the Brian Peck of it all, they also had another show that I thought was really disturbing. You remember the show Fear Factor? So apparently someone over at Nickelodeon wanted to create a kid's version. So they re-show some of these really crazy scenes, including, I think it was Brian. Yeah, I think it was Brian Hearn who ended up being wrapped up in, like, just smothered in peanut butter. And then he had dogs licking the peanut butter off of him. Someone at one point put a scorpion, like a real scorpion, in their mouth. On Air, it's called On Air Dares. It's supposed to be Nickelodeon's version of Fear Factor. In the interview that Dan Schneider did, he does talk about how some of those things went too far. Some of those things went too far. Okay. Um, all right. Exactly. The end says, did they not run background checks over there? It seems like, no. Three Three people, only for Brian Peck, who abused uh, Drake Bell, would later, of course, um, be let go from Nickelodeon only to go work at Disney. Only, mind you, everyone knew. Everyone knew. Let's, let's move into that. Episode three, at the end of episode two, that's when we see Drake Bell come to the set. Episode three is when Drake Bell tells a story. Drake Bell's story... His father, my heart broke for his father because his father saw the signs with this man. The, his fa Drake Bell's father saw every sign with this man. He saw, he saw the signs and he would never leave his son alone. Only for Brian Peck wanted, wanted to be so close to, to Drake, was touching him a lot. And the father said he was very uncomfortable. He, he spoke to people about it. And then they try to make it seem like he was homophobic. He's like, oh, no, Brian Peck, you know, he's, 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 he's um, homosexual. It, it's not anything like that. He's just very affectionate. But innately, and God only knows what Drake's father felt like. He's like, oh, maybe I am being homophobic. It's, maybe that's what, what's happening. No, almost manipulating the father to, to denounce his own instincts. That, no, something's fishy here. Something is very, very fishy here. So Brian, uh, Drake's father was his manager at the time, only for Brian to start slowly but surely putting things in Drake's head that your father should not be managing your career. Your father is going to prevent you from, from elevating. Brian is well-established in the Hollywood industry. So, he, so Drake really took what he said seriously. Mind you, over at Brian Peck's house, when they went to go to Brian Peck's house, uh, it was the Hollywood, Holly weird, all kind. Of, you got a murderer. A, a, you have you're a pen pal with the murder. That mm -mm. you are a pen pal and no. Anyways, I say all that to say, 
Drake eventually lets his father go as his manager. The mother ends up becoming, you know, coming in um, to to oversee those things. But the father warns the mother, never leave Drake alone with Brian Peck. Only for Brian to manipulate the mother. And I know, like, here's the thing. I'm not going to sit here and blame parents. Because abusers are very charismatic, very maniacal, very manipulati manipulative. So I'm not going to blame the mom here. But shout out to Drake Bell's girl, then girlfriend's mom. Because she probably saved, no, she saved his life. She saved his life. All right, look, I know, but Julia, but I know it, I know it. Y'all were going to say it. Drake's mother ain't ish. Because look, the father, Drake's father warned you. Warned you. Rasani says, oh, not murder a serial. Oh, okay, all right, all right. But still, I mean, I, okay, look, look, still a murderer, all right? Anyways, so the father knew. The father was just like, I know that this not this kid should not be around this man only for the father to be pushed out of, of Dr being Drake's manager and the mom not realizing because Brian's like, Oh, because Brian lived in orange County, you know, it was very far from where he needed to be. So this guy basically was like, Oh yeah, he could stay over my house. And that's when the abuse started. That is when the abuse started. Drake talks about it. You could tell how hard it was for him to talk about it, but they show in the court documents what Drake um, had happened to him. And horrific, horrific. He was only 15 years old. He talks about, Drake Bell talks about in this documentary that when it first happened, he was like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I, I can't drive. I can't call my mom and say, come and get me. This just happened to me. And then I have to sit and wait in, in, this, in this place with this man that just did what, did what he did to me. I, my heart broke for him because like, he felt isolated. And that's exactly what Brian Peck wanted to do. He wanted to isolate him. And then would deny, he's like, oh, I won't ever do it again. I won't ever do it again. And it just went on to happen again. Thank God for Drake Bell's then girlfriend's mom, because he was hanging out with the girlfriend. He, Brian Peck is calling him, calling him, calling him. He's not answering. He's like, I'm going to stay over, you know, my girlfriend's house. All right. I, I, I'm just going to highlight this comment, Miss Bernice. Is, she says, John Wayne Gacy killed teenage boys and young men and then buried them in, in his basement. That That is the man that was pen pals with Brian Peck. Disturbing. Disturbing, to say the least. So thank God for, for uh, Drake Bell's then-girlfriend's mom because she was just like, she, and she pulled him to the side because she suspected. She was like, what is happening here? And she told, she called Drake's mom and told her mom, I'm bringing him to therapy. I was like, good for her. Good for her. But of course, like any person that has been abused, Drake has gone through a lot, a lot. And even his own accusations of inappropriate texts with a, a minor. Um, he says he's done 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 his therapy and his time he was never i don't believe he was officially charged i know he ended up getting like he had to do community service and things like that all right um it, exactly yes and that that's the that's probably why i always feel a way about clowns and john wayne gacy was a part-time clown mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. anyways so they talk about that a lot in episode three of quiet on on set the dark side of kids tv documentary that's available on max for those that want to watch it just a reminder we're giving you guys a trigger warning for today's live of, because of what we are talking about we will be dropping the call and link for you guys to share your thoughts but as always don't forget guys you can also take us on the go, on the go by downloading the Kempire podcast on apple Podcasts. And on Spotify, we are also on tour. The Kempire After Dark live tour is here. We're coming to Boston May 30th. We will be in Nashville July 11th and Atlanta July.
July 12th. Then we're going to Seattle, August 30th. More dates will be announced soon, but make sure you're following and staying locked so that you will be the first to know. All right. All right. Exactly. The signs were definitely there. Definitely, definitely, definitely there in regards to um, Brian Beck. So Brian Beck is eventually arrested because Drake ends up confessing to the police. He had to tell them everything that happened to him, unfortunately for him. And he tells them, so they try to get, get an admission from Brian. So Drake calls him. Drake called. I feel like Brian kind of knew because he even says in the call, he's like, are we being recorded? I think he kind of knew that this was happening, but he still basically got away with it. Brian was convicted. I think he served like 16 months in prison, 16 months. God only knows what other children were abused by this man. You're not telling me that Drake Bell was the only one. Brian Beck worked with people like Leonardo DiCaprio. All right, let's talk about the the court letters, the letters that were sent to the judge. Some disturbing people that you, I mean, the late Alan Thicke, Joanna Kearns, all wrote letters for Brian Beck. But let me just highlight some of what was said because some of what was said was quite disturbing. First of all, James um, Marsden, you know James Marsden. You may not even recall his name, but you know his face, okay? James Marsden wrote this. Marsden said that he, quote, couldn't breathe when he found out that Peck had been arrested and added that Peck was the person who had encouraged him to move to L.A. and pursue acting as a career. He says, I've known Brian for 14 years and never once did I ever see any sign of him being capable of something like this. I have lived at his house for months and shared hotel rooms with him and never once did he ever make me feel compromised or uncomfortable in any way. Do you believe that? Possible. Possible. Um, Taram Killam also wrote um, in regards to this, although he's be now best known for working at SNL, Killam worked on several Nickelodeon shows, including All That and The Amanda Show before he appeared on SNL. Killam said that he was shocked by Peck's arrest. He says, I have seen the effects this situation has had on Brian, and I know for a fact that he regrets any mistakes made. I know for a fact that he has regrets any mistakes this is not what he's referring to, made, and that this is certainly not something that would ever happen again. That's not how this works, Tarim. That's not how this works. Alan Thicke, who has now passed away, Robin Thicke's father, who was also the star of Growing Pains, and Joanna Kearns, both of them wrote, wrote um, letters for this abuser. Alan, father to Robin Thicke and former Growing Pain star, wrote that Peck was highly professional and nurturing mentor. Joanna Kearns, who also was a star from Growing Pains, wrote, this is interesting part. Interesting is probably a, a, a sugar-coated word. So jo Joanna says, I have never known Brian to engage in any type of illegal, illegal activity in which he is charged and can only believe that there must have been some extreme situation or temptation exerted upon him to influence his actions. Joanna later said her letter was based on misinformation. What information, Joanna? What? Because based off what your statement here, you're blaming the victim. I can only believe that there must have been some extreme situation or temptation exerted upon him to influence his actions. Who are where? I, and I want to know what was the misinformation that you received, Joanna? Please tell me what, what, what misinformation that would make you write something like that. And there were more. Ron Melendez from General Hospital. Um, Will Friedel from Boy Meets World wrote, Ryder Strong also from Boy Meets World wrote statements. But Joanna Kearns wasn't the only one that wrote a statement similar to that was that was cringy, very victim blaming. Exactly. Christina says it's the most charming people you'd never suspect. 
sad. Very, very, very sad. For those that are just joining us, we're talking about the Max documentary, Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. If you're part of the Replay crew, as always, be sure to let us know your thoughts, your thoughts on this documentary. It's a four-part documentary. But I have to say, for it being almost four hours, I breezed through it. And I watched it twice. Twice. Okay. But like I said before, it is disturbing. If you've been in a situation or if you grew up watching these folks, it is hard to watch. It is hard to watch. And I feel so bad for Drake Bell. And I feel so bad for for his relationship and his father being being also a part of the victims of, of the situation. And the father was so heartbroken. When he first found out about this, he didn't realize that Dr- that Drake was a victim. And when he found out, he was heartbroken because he knew he knew his instincts told him about this man. All right. Drake recalls in episode four, the final episode of this four part documentary, he recalls the support that Brian Peck received in court. There were like 40 something people on Brian's side. They don't tell us who was in the court that day. God only knows. But they were all there to support Brian Peck. It should be noted that Brian ends up going to work on a Disney show after this incident. All right. Anyways, um, so Drake talks about that. Drake calls them out for for like this, this changed my life. I knew my life was never going to be the same the moment that that happened to him. All right. Um, Brian ends up working for Disney, as I mentioned to you guys before, and working for some of the folks that wrote character letters for him. However, during the documentary, of course, there are a bunch of disclaimers. Those creators say that the document, the the high, they had nothing to do with the hiring. Sound familiar in recent times? Just saying. All right. We find out in the episode four that there was um, there was um, another man that had a history of abusing children that was also on set and was found to have done it again on the Nickelodeon lot, literally on the Nickelodeon lot. It also should be noted that Dan Schneider, who is a prime focus of this do- documentary, has not been accused of abusing children. He has been accused of creating a hostile work environment and of being abusive. He's getting massaged. Here's the thing, though. He hasn't been convicted or accused of that, but I tell you this all the time. Just because you're not the direct person being attacked or touched or whatever it may be doesn't mean that you aren't affected if you are in the environment of what's happening okay this man as he's directing and you know watching what is playing out on the set is getting massages not from a a professional massage person not from a, a masseuse he's getting he's getting massages from people that are in the writer's room or are are part of the crew and he's texting them you know come come give me a massage in his interview that he did on his YouTube channel, it's like less than 20 minutes. I did watch it. I was going to play a clip from it, but I just feel like it's his video is very manipulative. Of course, he's did, he, is, he apologizes at the top of it, but then he you know makes excuses for a lot of what is said. He makes excuses for having two female writers on the same salary. He's like, oh, that happens all the time in Hollywood. Oh, I shouldn't have done this, or I shouldn't have done that. Um, but I I didn't, I, I was not involved in that. I, I was not involved in salaries or, or casting and things like that. Just saying. Um, exactly, Ivanta reminds us that Brian Peck was also touchy with Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, my goodness. Um, what else? Was so I Carly, I didn't realize the the depth of how involved Dan Schneider was in in pretty much all of these successful shows on Nickelodeon, like Ike, I Carly. 
and how successful that was. So Jeanette McCurdy did write a memoir talking about, she never named Dan Schneider in the memoir, but she talked about a powerful person um, during that time. So many people assume that's who she's talking about. Okay. So she did not show up to the Kids' Choice Awards when he was being honored. And a lot of people th saw that and they were like, why didn't she show up? Well, because she has talked a lot since then about what she experienced working in Hollyweird. Okay. All right. So they talk about the rise, the rise of shows like iCarly. They also talk about Ariana Grande and some of the inappropriate things that she was made to do on the set of her of multiple shows that she was a part of on in in her years of, of Nickelodeon. I want look. She, I know uh, Ariana recently spoke about getting her mental health and things like that together, and you know a lot of people were wondering why she looked the way that she looked, and she's like, "This is the healthiest that you guys have ever seen me." So it makes me wonder what what she went through and look and looking back on some of what what's playing out in these shows, very adult humor with children. We shouldn't take this lightly. And Nickelodeon, you are definitely responsible because after you got a lawsuit from those two female writers years ago, you continued to work with them, of course, because he created hit shows for you yet created he created a toxic work environment and that continued for years of course there will be actors that will say well that wasn't our experience that wasn't your experience fine and that that is fine because i'm sure a lot of people that have worked in toxic work environments there will be other people well that wasn't my experience because sometimes these folks target specific people but the behavior it seems to to be consistent throughout. Uh, Riz says, "I wonder." Oh, I forgot about that. Uh, Riz says, "I wonder what uh, happened to Lee Thompson's Thomas Thompson Young, Jet Jackson." Well, I think this is just the beginning, and this is why a lot of people wonder, like, why are people coming out now? Because now they feel it's a safe space. They look back on their experience. They're like, oh, is that what that was? Is that why I feel the way that I feel right now? Um, and it was very interesting that that um, Dan used uh, a former actor, a black actor from iCarly. And the interview felt very orchestrated. You know, it, it didn't feel like if he had done it with someone that didn't work with with him and wasn't friendly with him, it would have been interesting to see how that interview would have went if you had like a journalist asking the questions. All right. And look, Dion says, too, some of them are lying, too. They don't want anyone to know. They don't. They don't. Exactly. Sean. Sean says, I can't believe they, they were OK using the name taint in the amanda show sketches and we talked a little bit about that earlier on because when uh, allegedly nickelodeon executives and things asked about the use of that word uh dan played it down it's like oh no we mean like tainting you know something or making worse something even though clearly i guess in the writer's room or behind the scenes they knew what they were doing that you know they were playing with that and you see examples of inappropriate imagery with children throughout his shows and now people are looking back and like, and we, we have to keep in mind, back in the day, there's a lot of stuff that people overlooked and just sort of like downplayed it. And do I think that this type of behavior has um, exited Hollywood? No. I think they probably have gotten better at covering it up. Dan Schneider eventually is then pushed out of Nickelodeon because the Me Too era happens. I think it was like 2018. The Me Too era, he was one of the people that were pushed out of positions after years of abuse. He was eventually pushed out, apparently walked away with $7 million. And he still makes money off of the shows. Keep that in mind. He still makes money off of the shows on, on Nickelodeon that, that he produced. And didn't they just come out with... The, it, 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 was he a part of Good Burger? 
I mean, I know that he helped foster the careers of Keenan and Kel. He also answered in that interview that he felt really um, bothered at the accusations of how uh, he treated specifically black actors. And he feels like I, I was awarded and celebrated for how I, I had diversity throughout my shows. Okay, sir. That, that, here's the thing. You can have diversity, especially back in the day. Some people thought, you know, when they used to say, I don't see color or, you know, I have, you know, I definitely included black people. They don't realize the microaggressions that still existed for the, the most well-meaning people. The most well-meaning people don't realize today that their behavior was, you know, microaggressions or problematic and things like that, especially in, in some of the scenes and sketches that you created for black actors. Uh, yes, he did do good, good burger. That's why I, I, fi I figured. I figured. Oh, thank you, Lil Shorty. Lil Shorty says Dan made a, a cameo in Good Burger. This is why I, I'm, I'm glad that you guys are here. Shout out to the Nickelodeon kids. <laughs> the kids that, that grew up watching the show. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to drop the call in link for you guys. For those that are listening to this, you won't be able to hear the calls. But if you want to hear the callers, head on over to our YouTube channel so that you can hear the callers. But uh, we normally don't include the callers for our um, podcast version. But live chat, we appreciate you guys being here for our live recap of Quiet on Set, the documentary, The Dark Side of Kids TV. I already know that they could do multiple seasons because Disney alone, Disney alone, they could do a documentary and they probably are working on something. Probably are working on something. All right, so let me drop the call in link. Hold on, y'all. Let me drop the call in link for our members first. All right, members, I'm going to drop the call in link on the community tab for you guys. And if you haven't already, live chat, once we get to, let's get to 400 likes, and I'll drop the call in link for you guys as well. We're just taking some quick callers for today. We normally um, would recap Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, but Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is done. And so it's Anna Marie Wiley. We talk about that on TikTok. So if you're not following me on TikTok, go over there. I talk about Anna Marie Wiley being uh, fired, basically. Fired, basically. All right. Let me drop the call in link for our members. Live chat, once we get to 400 likes, I'll drop the call in link for you guys. All right. Members, we drop the call in link for you if you want to call in and share your thoughts. Twitter. Can I drop it here? I don't know if I can drop it here on Twitter. It's all right. Twitter, if you want the call in link, head on over to our YouTube channel so you can get the call in link. All right. Let me say thank you. We had a, a super chat from Fabiana. Thank you so much for the super chat, Fabiana. We appreciate your support. And thank you to everyone that sends in super chats, Venmo's, Cash Apps, things like that. All of that helps support. But you can also support the channel just by liking the video. Just by liking the video. And shout out to our channel members. Shout out to our uh, King's Guards for holding us down. And as I said to you before, these are very sensitive topics. So be mindful, especially in the comment section of what you're saying and don't attack people for their opinions. Okay. All right. And for those that are calling in, also be mindful of our community guidelines. So please abbreviate some of your words that you want to share. Just keep that in mind when calling in. Okay. <sighs> yeah. Make it make sense. Queen says, this is going to be a sad discussion. I mean, first of all, I want to say this about for, shout out to all of the former kid actors, the the um, Nickelodeon actors that were a part of this documentary. Shout out to Drake Bell. Shout out to the parents that were a part of this documentary as well. Uh, like Brandy's mother, um, not Brandy the singer, but the the, the young actress um, who was a part of. She was not a part of the documentary, but her mom was, and her mom felt so much guilt because there was another predator. Before we talked, even talked about Brian Peck, there was another predator on set that um, that was very inappropriate with with her daughter and sent a very lewd photo to her only for it they discovered so much about this his name what was it like josh, josh handy or something like that so they talked about him before they got into brian peck and then talking about that other man that was arrested so there were three predators on the nickelodeon lot three 
Here's the thing, though. I want to say this in regards to, because as I've said before countless times, Dan Schneider has not been accused of abusing ch children. However, some of the sketches that he wrote seemed very inappropriate for children to be acting out. Um, I always believe that, especially if you are the, the head of, of anything, if you're the boss of anything, it encourages certain behavior on on in the work environment, not even just on set. It encourages certain behavior in the work environment. So I'm not surprised that you found a, a Josh Handy or a, a Brian Peck um, being a part of this situation. Oh, Jason Handy. Thank you so much, um, a lady, uh, lady Autumn Sky. Jason. All right. Uh, let me see what you guys are saying in the chat. Oh, this is true. TA says, look what happened in gymnastics. There are predators everywhere everywhere um deborah says why didn't the mom go to the police she talks about that in the documentary she says if she goes to the to the police she felt as if they're going to blame me like i didn't do enough and that happens a lot not just with victims but the families and parents of victims so just just let's give them some grace uh riz this is speculated too People are wondering, who exactly is Jamie Lynn's child's father? There's speculation that it's Dan Schneider. I don't know. They don't even talk about Jamie Lynn, Lynn Spears in the documentary at length. You do see her because she was a part of the Nickelodeon era of, you know, popularity. All right. Um, oh, exactly. For Cullen says that his sketches was Tiffany Haddish and Ari Spears level. And somehow... He made multiple, multiple shows with inappropriate behavior. All right. We're going to get to some callers, guys. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video. It's an easy and free way of supporting not just my channel, but other channels as well. We're talking about the, Ma uh, the uh, Max documentary, Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. If you're part of the replay crew, be sure to let us know your thoughts on the documentary and what stood out to you and other things. One of the things that you want to talk about in, uh, in regards to the documentary. TJ says, Kempire, this is a scary world for kids. I don't have any myself, but everyone just has to be careful and protect their kids these days. It's scary out there. And it kind of makes me think back to Drake Bell's father. He, he really thought that he was protecting his son. And he really tried, only for him to be pushed out. And then um, he, I think that he believed by warning his wife that Drake would be protected. And Drake says... He would want his kids to be in the in the world of Hollywood and doing acting because he's like, I've also had a lot of really great experiences um, doing what I love. And I think that kids can have opportunities in this world of Hollywood, but they also need to be protected properly. And I don't know if that's even happening today. Yes, we could say that it is. We can say we can release statements like Nickelodeon did and say that, yes, we've, we've made new guidelines and we're doing this. But are kids really, truly being protected or are abusers being protected? Because Drake Bell was not Brian Peck's only victim, in my belief. We do get to see Drake talk a little bit about how this abuse affected him and, you know, his sobriety. Like he ends up, this is why you see certain people, certain child actors have these mental breaks or get, you know, addictions and things like that because they're trying to numb the pain. And sometimes they don't even realize what they're trying to numb. Drake says that he's now in therapy. We even get to see this moment with him and his dad together and, and them walking away at the end of this documentary. If you are interested in hearing um, Dan Schneider's side, as I said before, he's posted um, an interview that he did, an interview that he did um, on his YouTube channel, trying to address some of of what is said in this two this you know this documentary, this four part documentary. I don't feel like I got anything from what he what he said throughout the documentary. They do let you know his thoughts and responses to some of the accusations that he's accused of throughout the documentary. None of his responses for me convinced me that of anything, to be honest. But you can watch for yourself. You can watch for yourself. 
Um, yes, and the end says, and Drake was talking to an underage girl, wasn't he? Yeah, they talk about that in the documentary as well. They do talk about that. And I'm not surprised because sometimes when you are abused, you end up becoming an abuser as well. All right, so let me get to some of the callers. Again, calls, please respect the timer so that way we are able to get to everyone. All right? All right. Let me go backstage. Okay. For those that are just joining us, don't forget to like the video. It's an easy and free way of supporting not just my channel, but other channels as well. Hold on. Why is this not switching for me? All right. Let's try this. There we go. All right. Danielle, what's going on? What are your thoughts on this Quiet on the Set documentary? Okay. So I actually made some notes, but now I know you got the time going. I'm going to try to combine some of them. <laughs> So when the, and I can't remember everyone's name, but the black gentleman, the actor, the child actor, when mm -hmm. he said that he felt like he had to continue to do the business because he was trying to get his family, for lack of better words, out the hood. He mm -hmm. wanted to keep it, you know, basically take care of his family. Yep. That's yep. a lot of pressure for a kid. Now, the flip side of that, because another one of my points is the parents were trying to do the same thing. So you now have these parents who are using their kids to make money to pro provide a, a specific lifestyle. Yeah. Well, I feel like if we're going to protect these kids, I think parents need to be mentally evaluated as well. Mm. Because if that's their mentality, then you have parents who also look away at certain things because they know that check is still going to come. Mm. I.e., let's take it back to Bill Cosby. When Bill Cosby, one of his ladies, um, the parents of a, one of the, one of the ladies, she was 17 year old, 17 years old, trying to pursue a modeling career. And her parents allowed her to go visit Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby is a comedian. Why are you sending your 17 year old daughter to his hotel room to help him for him to help her with her modeling career? That doesn't even make sense. Mm. So I, when you have parents with those type of mentalities, I think they need to be mentally checked as well. I think the, the, the history of these kids, let's look all, let's go all the way back to Michael Jackson playing with the rat. The history of child or children entertainers, and I'm not even going to say actors, let's just say entertainers. Mm -hmm. When they're put into these spaces, there are more kids going into adulthood that come out with something that's not on the good side than yeah. there are those that come out on the good side. If we can think about maybe the Keisha Knight Pulliams, the Malcolm Jamal Warners, we look at them, okay, they might have come out on the good side, but there, it's, not, it's not enough of them to not protect. And when they say protect, if we can sit up here and protest or strike against the writers because the writers aren't getting what they want, we need to strike for these kids. Mm. Well, we need to strike for these kids. Well, oh, we, the whole situation with Balenciaga, people are well, still going to those well, runway shows and wearing Balenciaga. Hey, Kim K. And the crazy part, the first thing I thought about, one, I didn't know that this was the documentary that it was going to be. Mm. I thought it was about the behind the scenes of Nickelodeon. I, I knew the Dan Snyder thing was coming. I didn't know that this was it. So I'm thinking mm. I'm watching. I'm thinking I'm going to see Mark. I'm thinking I'm going to see Double Dare. People get slimed. Mm. But when they talk about the slime in the face with the ejection stuff, what? With what? Jamie Lynn what? Spears. Mm -hmm. Growing up, my parents allowed me to watch Nickelodeon. Again, back like I said, back then it was just Double Dare. We thought it was kids having some kind of say of what's going into the entertainment because it's supposed to reflect us. Yeah. But as I watch this and you listen to the jokes and the innuendos, we know they have the laugh tracks. Those mm -hmm. kids had no clue what no. they were doing. And I remember my mom used to let me sing all the words to George Michael. And when I grew up, I said, why did you let me sing that stuff? She said, girl, you didn't know what you were singing. You didn't know what that stuff meant. But I wonder how these poor babies who are now adults, when they see this or when they think about it, not just the ones that were interviewed, but think about the ones that didn't interview, like your Ariana Grande's. Mm -hmm. What is going on in them? I just pray that someone sees this and starts to put things in place for the up and coming children, because we need children. We, they are very entertaining. They're cute as a button. And then the other key piece, I'm going to say this, I'm going to go. Dan started his acting career at a time where adults were playing kids. Because remember, head of the class was about high schoolers. Yep. Dan was already a grown man. There were 19. a lot of people on that show in that class that were grown. And I didn't know that at the time, watching no. my mom tell me. She was like, those are grown A adults watch, playing kids. So we appreciated the Nickelodeons because we now actually have kids playing kids in the class. When you look at the Steve Harvey show, when he had that show about the high school, you had high school kids playing high schools. But if this is what we're going to get, Go back to putting the adults in it. We don't need to get like the kids are cute. They're great. But if this is what we're going to get, give me the adults again. Yeah. I don't I don't want to ever see anything like this again. This was heartbreaking. Yeah. 
Thanks, Danielle, for calling in. All right. All right. Again, please respect the timer, <laughs> everyone. Uh, Wendy's backstage. Wendy always respects the timer. What's going on, Wendy? Hi, Kim Potter. Okay, I have not watched it yet. I'm going to watch it after mm-hmm. listening to this um, podcast or the show. Um, I, I am an 80s kid. 70s babies, 80s kids, 90s teens. So the Nickelodeon I grew up on, not only was it Double Dare, but it was You Can't Do That on Television, um, Hey Dude, um, all the other shows. And, you know, just listening to this is very heartbreaking. Also got a short story. I had my son to audition for Nickelodeon when he was like eight or nine years old. Mm. And if it wasn't for my husband's um, sickness, we had to tell him, no, he can't do that right now. And then the spirit told me, no, you don't want him to be in that atmosphere. And I'm so glad that I have listened to that yeah. because no telling what my son would have come up as. Because my son is very bright and very talented and everything. And I was like, okay, why not? He almost got, he got into the major auditions, mm. but then I had to tell him no, because we had to take care of my husband and all of that. Yeah. But I pray for everybody that was involved in it. All right, bye. Thanks, Wendy. Take care. All right, we're going to bring up Nicole next. Nicole, what's going on? Why are you doing that to me, Campire? What do you mean? What am I (laughs) doing? You've been speaking some truth. Yeah, you're getting very deep today. And I feel in your spirit. And I want to say to you, it's like, I've always been a protector of children, Mm. human trafficking. I live in the DMV. The biggest hub is in D.C. Atlanta, yeah. San Francisco, Houston, Texas. I used to do research papers on my master's degree. What's this? So when you're talking about it, when I look at it, these children, it's not just child stars. Yeah, child stars. There's a reason why Brittany went crazy. There's a reason why I'm in the bell. I was went crazy. There's a reason why, what's the black dude um, that was on a Jamie Foxx show? I still watch Jamie Foxx, the one, um, you know, the little boy that um, I can't remember his name, but they just found him on the street walking just a week ago. Google it. Mm. He was started on Jamie Foxx show. There's a heartbreak. And I love that what you're doing, you bring your light to it. I had a best friend of mine in my 20s. I'm 50 years old. When I saw Dan Snyder. I like, that's the boy from the head of the class. You know, I really want to get fat boy issues. But the thing I want to say is that I had a grown black man who was in the military, working in the Navy fields, muscular. And I dated him for a few years. But the thing was, he was a virgin for a long time. And then I come to find out he came to my house and it's ironic because I'm going to bring up Oprah because, you know, I love my Oprah and I hate how they doing this against her. But he came to my house with a Bible in his hand. He broke down to me and told me he was raped by his nine, his uh, cousin, a male cousin, at nine years old. And I saw everything I played out. So I thank you for talking about because it's it's not a space for children. It's not a I've never been molested, but I've heard so many friends in my life who've been molested and sexually abused. Mm-hmm. So I thank you, and I really want to talk to you about the Wendy Williams thing you did the other day. So they stealing our money, but yeah, thank you. Thank Tampa. you, Nicole. Thank you for sharing your story. All right. All right, y'all. We're going to get to some more callers. We're talking about the Max documentary, Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. If you're part of the replay crew, be sure to share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. As always, we do not moderate adults, so don't attack people for their opinions, okay? Rasani's backstage. We're going to bring up Rasani up next. Rasani, what were your thoughts? Hey, Kempire. Hey, hey, everyone. Hey. Um, I didn't necessarily grow up on that type era uh you know the all that and yada yada nickelodeon yeah i knew of them and you know i never really knew the characters and whatever drake broke my heart i wondered 
when he was first assaulted, why he didn't call, think to call his dad. Mm. I, I'm very curious about that because I'm thinking, and I've, I've, I've heard, you know, like psychiatrists and psychologists, you know, like parents be like, oh, if anybody did something to my child, I would analyze them. Mm. And I'm wondering if that was something that he was a he was trying he's trying to protect his dad no by not protecting himself mm. um with jet uh i forget his um government name lee jackson for you know Rosolian when he you know unalived himself it broke my heart and watching this i want to see what um the disney stage has to has going on over there so they should do a documentary on that i'm sure they're working but, on it but, you know, it's just like, you know, like Corey um, Feldman has always come down and said, but we blame victims and shame victims so much. Yeah. You know, it's like even you hear even um, the, I think it's a new all that I heard it on the Breakfast Club or something in their rumor report where talk, they're talking about the new all that cast and they're making fun of the kids, you know, like Drake Bell and you're shaming him for something he had no control over at 15 years old. And it doesn't matter what age, you know, from the womb to a teenage, they're all still kids and they all still need to be protected. Yeah. And um, these this Hollywood industry, do you need to do a better job or just don't put kids, uh, don't, don't put kids in acting at all? No. Thank you, Rasani, so much for calling in. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Here's the thing. I think we... And I, I say this when we were talking about the Annie Cohen lawsuit with Leah McSweeney, we have to remember, even though it's Hollywood, even though it's entertainment, it's still a work environment. There are still things that need to be fo uh, followed legally. And I think because it is Hollywood, people have allowed allowances because they want to elevate their careers. And victims, yes, victims can be children, but victims can also be adults. And we see a lot of victim shaming all the time on social media, and that has to end too. We also have to keep an open mind why people do not share their stories because people are shamed. You have these Hollywood big name actors at the time of the whole Brian Peck situation talking about they must have done something. He must have been tempted. It must have been these levels of temptation. What? But now people are not seeing it so um, blatantly. They're saying it in other ways. And that's important as well to tell. All right. We're going to continue to get to some more uh, callers. We have Jason backstage. We'll bring Jason up next. What's going on, Jason? Hi, Mike Empire. How are you doing oh, today? Not my... Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> What's going on, Jason? I'm doing good. I'm really happy that you recapped this because um, I really wanted you to talk about it and get your opinion on it. Okay. Um, um, as a child of the 2000s, uh, to give you a little hint, I'm a year older than Dre's boyfriend. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm really disappointed in these shows because I grew up on like shows like Drake and Josh, Zoe 101, iCarly and Victorious, and it's very mm -hmm. weird looking back on it now, seeing like these like sexual innuendos that mm -hmm. yeah the kids um, reenact. It's very cringy. Yeah. And uh, oh, sorry, I'm a bit nervous. It's okay. And um, um. Yeah, I just honestly, when I think about it now, I just can't bring myself to talk about it. Well, to like even watch it, cause like especially when um, like um, whenever our Victorious aired, he really went wild with like all the sexual on the endos and stuff. Mm. And um, yeah, and I also just want to take the moment to say that I am proud of uh, Drake to for him coming forward and sharing his story yeah. as a person who has been sexually assaulted. Myself, I am very proud of him for even um, coming up uh, forward and uh, telling the story because it's not a lot of space for us men to like come forward. And honestly, a lot of us, I feel like we really, uh, whenever we go through something like that, we tend to repeat the same pattern that has been happened to us instead of like stopping it. So I'm really glad that he came forward. Most definitely, most definitely. Jason, thank you so much for calling in. Um, thank you so much. Have a nice day. You too. Bye. All right. We're going to bring up our next caller. Our next caller is Tyler. Tyler, what's going on? 
Hi, Kim Pyre. How are you? So, um, I watched maybe the first 20 minutes of the documentary and I had to turn it off because it was triggering. Mm. Very um, quickly, I am a um, very feminine gay male. And um, I experienced these things when I was younger. And I can understand that as you um, get older and people people do victim blame. Mm. They say, you know, things like... Um, well, you, you're gay because you were touched or you were mm. this. So you just tend to t put things behind you. And it's like, no, I've always had these feelings. And this person was aware that you were, you know, pushing me to the side. I really want to just say this very briefly. Those of you who are on here who have parents, I mean, who are parents, and you see um, your children may be different or things like that, understand uh, predators see how you treat your children mm. and they go after those kids mm. because they see that, you know, they're being ostracized and pushed to the side. So that's how they lure them in sometimes. And also, I also noticed very briefly, and I'm finna cut it off. I also noticed that sometimes some people tend to date abusers and things like that because that's what they went through when they were younger and they think mm. they can save them. Mm. So they, they think like, oh, let me go over here. Let me, cause I've been through that as well. Dealt with men who weren't comfortable coming out the closet, thinking that I could save them or just dating the wrong people because that's all I knew. Mm. So I just say, not, don't excuse the behavior please don't but if you can prevent it please like give them a hug talk to them see what's going on because i wish i had that when i was a child then i wouldn't be spending all this money on therapy to try to get you know get some things in check that's just being for real yeah. pay attention to the signs yeah. but that's all thank, thank you thank so you. much tyler take care all right we're going to bring up some more callers guys if you're just joining us we're talking about the four-part documentary quiet on set the dark side of kids TV. We're going to bring up Danny next. Danny, what were your thoughts on this documentary? Hey, Kempire. So um, I'm a new parent. My son will be two in June. Mm. So watching this was crazy because I used to be able to watch documentaries like it, it was never it bothered me, but it never bothered me on this level. Like mm. me and my, my husband were just sitting in the room talking about the things that we would do to prevent it. Mm. Because I feel like well, with Hollywood, when you have children, I feel like there should be something in the contract, meaning if your child got signed up for the job, you got signed up for the job too. Your child should be escorted everywhere by you. Like it is your responsibility to protect your child. And I think that will help save Hollywood a little bit because now you can't say, oh, well, you left them. No, you were supposed to be with your child. And I think that should be like the new agreement that the parents have to be there with their child or have a guardian be there with their child. I, um, to I, prevent I do want to note future. this, Danny. Technically, if you uh, watching the documentary, the parents all were there. Yeah, but I think they should have to be in a room. Like I wouldn't have my kid just on set. And, like I should be by the cameraman. Like I want to make sure everything is on the I up and up. Because I'm I, I'm really big as yeah. I do want to correct something. I'm, I'm I'm trying to be quick. The one lady who called in to talk about um, Brian Kern, his mom was trying to protect him and his dream because she had said in the documentary, I never wanted to be the one making all the noise because I didn't want it to reflect, reflect on him. Yeah. So I'm going to finish with that. Thank you so much for the time, Kimpire. Thank you, Danny. Take care. Uh, yeah. And, and it, the heartbreaking scene where Brian's mom talks about how him not being asked back drastically you saw she saw a change in her son she said that's where he be, you, you literally see him just literally change in the chair and she talked about their relationship from that moment on was never the same because internally brian probably blamed her because she was a very vocal parent on set i don't like this what's happening here and even his agent were like tracy you can't you, you can't be involved you're gonna hurt his career all right, we're going to get to some more callers. Norma's backstage. We're going to bring Norma up next. Norma, what's going on? Norma, you're uh, muted. Good, good afternoon. <laughs> sorry, sorry. That's this okay. this breaks my heart because there, if anyone knows me, I love children. And my heart goes out to Nicole, goes out to the other callers who have been victims. Um, just a couple of things to know. Um, when a child is under 18, they are, by law, not allowed to work over a certain amount of hours. Mm. I believe it's eight hours. And they're supposed to be a teacher on set. So they have to break and go to school because they're missing school. So there are adults around the kids. There's also the Coogan Law, which uh, 
a percentage of what they make has to go in a trust so the parents can't keep that money. Yes, in California, what I don't, right? uh, that's for in anything within the, the SAG working on, on, uh, on, uh, for anything for any child under 18. What I don't know is if there are SAG representatives, because you can call a SAG representative if you're feeling threatened on set. And they do come, they do show up every once in a while. I've worked with children before. Yes, the parents are on set. Sometimes they're in video village. They're very present, but then the kids do go off. And I think a lot of the reasons that young children, actors uh, go, you know, is the pressure, the pressure to succeed. Mm. Um, I myself, I have not seen this. I will watch it. I'm going to look into SAG where instead of just having a teacher, they need to have a protective person on set at all times definitely you definitely. know somebody to make sure that the kids don't you know i know of a story where my my acting teacher went to jail it's very well known all of his news was scrubbed and he r a p e mm. a 12 year old girl in my community mm. i happen to know the girl she made it on the hollywood report it was a big story but then they scrubbed everything this is heavy, heavy, heavy. My heart goes out to victims. Please know that it's not your fault. There are predators in every corner of the world. No. And just to end this on a happy note, eight and a half is not returning to uh, Beverly we Hills. About that. <laughs> <Norma>, goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> we talked about that. Yes, Anna Marie Wiley won't be returning to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She confirmed this morning. We talked a little bit about that during this live, but I did post on TikTok another reason why you should follow us on all platforms because I have not posted it here on YouTube just yet. But I did post a video earlier today talking about uh, Karen Huker's DUI. Not good. And also talking about this Brandy and Monica situation that's happening on social media right now. So be sure to check that out if you may have missed it. King's Guards, if we can post a link, a link to that story, that would be great. Thank you in advance. Anthony's backstage. We're going to bring Anthony up next. Anthony, what's going on? Hey, Empire. Hey. Anthony from Los Angeles, California. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm okay. Um, this documentary really did take a toll on us. Obviously, trigger warning for everyone. Um, thank you so much for recapping this. This really does need to be discussed and shared. That way we're all well aware of what's going on or what did happen. Yeah. So thank you so much for recapping. Thank you. Um, three quick notes. Drake Bell, thank you so much for coming forward and sharing your story. I am uh, as well glad that he actually shared his own experience of him messaging a minor yeah. back then and sharing that because I thought they were going to skip over that. But thankfully they talked about it. So thank you again, Drake, for sharing that. Um, Dan Schneider's apology video, you can miss me with that. And obviously, you know, no, no to you. So 19 minutes to discuss four hours worth of documentary. They reached out to you. Even news networks reached out to you. Nothing from you, just from your YouTube channel that was highly edited and as well with the work with the actor that you hired. No, miss me with that, sir. And then lastly, um, even from people that worked in Nickelodeon, like for example, Nessie Classified School Survivor Guide cast um, reacted to the documentary and even made jokes about it. Um, they have worked in Nickelodeon as well. Drake Bell even responded to them on Twitter, yeah. reposting their live, sharing that. Y'all can miss me with that as well. How very disrespectful. They were your colleagues. You were in the same network. Sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm shaking. But okay. beyond awful, but thank you so much again for recapping this. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. All right. All right. We're going to bring up Maya next. Oops, hold on, Maya. Maya, what's going on? Hi, Kempire. Um... I'm gonna try to make this quick, but I don't know if I can, so apologies. Um, this documentary was hard to watch. Um, I do wanna say that like a lot of, the thing that spoke, really stood out to me was how um, the guy, Brian Peck, showed the other adults that photo, that image of John Wayne Gacy mm -hmm. and said, oh yeah, we're pen pals. And he just put it out in the open that was a, a shocker and then on top of that i didn't like the fact that another person who was who drake's dad spoke to said oh he's gay because there's so much um misinformation and homophobia that conflates yep. um predatory people yep. with um homosexuality or like anyone queer and I, you know, to another caller's earlier point, that's not the reason why, and sorry, my dog, um, that's not the reason why 
those things happen. Um, when I was in school, I was in a classroom with two different teachers that were later removed from the school because of, um, you know, uh, involving themselves preying on minors. Mm. And looking back, I see, especially with one of them, like how there were so many signs. Um, I, I, I do think that there are predators everywhere, but I feel like they are repeat predators because we live in a culture where people will say things and you, people will laugh it off. But as you're laughing it off, the person who says that is thinking, oh, yeah, my behavior is OK. My mm -hmm. behavior is OK. So when it's little things like people will be like, oh, they're 18. It's fine. It's like if you if, if, if I'm talking to someone and for some reason they know the age of consent in every country, I'm not talking to you anymore mm. because that just tells me that your only line is what the, is, is jail. Mm. Because if, 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 if there wasn't a law, you would be just like how employers, if there wasn't a minimum wage, they would pay you even less. Mm. I feel like one of the things to be vigilant about is how people speak and how people make these quote unquote jokes. And yeah, I might come off as a buzzkill, but I'm not going to normalize anything that I think is untoward behavior because I'm starting to think about who are you around where these jokes fly that you think you can make this joke with me. So mm. I think uh, in addition to things everyone else said, you really have to be vigilant about like the people in your circle and just, you know, make your boundaries clear because yeah. once those people realize, oh, she's not even going to let a small joke pass, you'll weed a lot of people out of your life. Mm. So, um, you know, I could go on and on, but the other point I want to make before I leave is that Coogan's law is like 85% can be used and 15% is put in a trust. Okay. I think it should be the reverse where most of the money is put in a trust to further um, prevent parents from putting their kids in dangerous situations or letting things fly. I also think there should be independent um monitors at all sets with children because unfortunately sometimes the parents are are the predators or are you or know um just going to get, to get along so yeah so uh anyways i think an independent party should be there at all times that's a good good so idea, that, that's all i had to say thank you i'm sorry for going over that's but okay. um appreciate this discussion kempire thank you so much maya take care i i love that idea an independent moderator Here's the thing, because even Tracy, you know, uh, Brian P uh, Hearn's mom, who was very outspoken, she was very outspoken on set. He, he, he recalls like there were days where they did not pay attention to the child labor laws. And they were like, he was like, mom, we're, you know, we're, we're disobeying child labor laws again today, you know, working past the time that they were supposed to be working. So just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. So. Um, so an independent person on set would actually be a great idea. A great idea. All right. Uh, we have a f quite a few more calls. Again, calls, please respect the timer so that we're able to get to all the callers. Because if we don't, that means I'm going to have to cut this live short because I got places to be too. All right. Shady Gal's backstage. We're going to bring her up next. Shady Gal, what were your thoughts? Shady Gal, I can't hear you. Uh -oh. Sorry. Uh, oh. Heartbroken. <laughs> Because I grew up in the 90s. I grew up loving Nickelodeon. And so this has kind of really ruined that for me. Hmm. I, the only good thing Dan did was try to, you know, like, you know, console Drake or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, okay, but you never really, in none of his interviews did he address the racism that he was accused of. He didn't. In that little 10-minute, like, Instagram stuff, he did not address that. Which should have been addressed. <laughs> well, he but did say in that interview, he says uh, he was surprised by that accusation because he's he's been celebrated for the diversity of his cast. That's what he said in that interview. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a quintessential white way of saying, hey, I went to a school with a whole bunch of black and Latino kids. So I'm diverse. I'm an ally. It felt very much performative mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't even counting that. Because okay. the fact that the black mamas all said, like, yo, we was looking out for our kids. We could see the difference in our kids' treatment. Yeah. And shout out to the black mothers on set who spoke up, mm -hmm. who interviewed. Like, appreciate you. And I don't know if everybody knows this, but the girlfriend at the time, her name was Fifi Dobson. She had a little bit of a career. In yes, the, the singer. Yeah, that her mama who called. It was Fifi's mama? That Fifi's call for Drake? Mama. Yeah. Wow. Shout out to 
shout out to the women raising black kids. They know what to look for. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Shady Gal, for, for adding that to the story. I didn't realize that. All right. We're going to bring up next Noah. Hold on. Noah, what's going on? Hey, how are you? Oh, well, how are you? I'm doing good. Um, only thing I really want to talk about is pretty much, I would say, um, when it comes to these kids that are being abused, another topic that we probably address in our generation um, is going to be those YouTubers and then also the people on TikTok, Instagram that are exploiting their children daily mm. i don't understand and it's getting worse like the the pages would have like these moms would have a beautiful instagram all these kids and they're selling photos of their kids on the links and mm. it's just like we need to get those kids as well like especially like i'm a gen z so it's insane that like growing up on these tv shows and you know that they've been exploited as you get older and then also becoming like you're in your 30s having a page also exploiting your children so yeah. i just feel like we definitely need to be better for our kids. And also another point before I go is um, we need to have more internet safety as well. Mm -hmm. um, we're getting into a space where like we don't have laws yet for a lot of kids and children and also when it comes to the internet. Yeah. So I just hopefully for these platforms that we are just more conscious of how like all these people are weird. Yeah. And to be more aware of that. That's it. Um, oh, also, and the last note, I'm um, going to see you also in Atlanta as well. So Yay. have a great day. I'll see you then, Noah. Thank you so much for calling in. No problem. Have a good day. You too. And thank you for the segue, guys. Don't forget the Kempire After Dark live tour is coming to a city near you. More cities will be announced, but we will be in Boston on May 30th. We'll be in Nashville on July 11th, then Atlanta on July 12th. Then we'll be in Seattle on August 30th. More information on the Kempire After Dark live tour is available in the description. Okay, let's get to some more callers. Jess, we're going to bring you up next. What's going on, Jess? What were your thoughts? Jeff. Yes, can you hear me, Jeff? Now I can. What's going on? Yes. Yeah, so the thing that stuck out to me the most was the part where um, I think it was the show and all that where they were basically talking about when they when they sat the crew down and the cast and they tell they took all the parents out and they told them that Brian was fired yeah. and yeah, it was the part where they basically were saying that. Um, like where they basically asked him, like, you know, he basically said it wasn't anyone on our cast that was assaulted, right? And they said, yes, it was. If it was one of the people on your shows. Mm. And that's when, that's the part that really, really stuck out to me because a lot of times when abuse is happening, people think about the fact that, yeah, it happens, it happens. But when they realize that, yeah, it happens to someone that you know, mm. someone that you see, when it's, when it's someone that's beside you, that's when it gets real. Yeah. And that's what that's something that really, really stuck out to me because that's real life a lot of times. And it just goes to show that, like, they that they initially thought that, okay, this is probably happening or it probably is, um, it probably occurred or probably didn't occur. No. But maybe it didn't happen to anyone here. Mm. And so it was pretty sad. Yeah. Jess, thank you so much for calling in. No problem. Bye. Bye. All right. We have JL backstage. We're going to bring up JL next. JL, what's going on? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Hey, Kim Byer. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I love your show. I'm Thank so you. happy that you talked about this docuseries because it has really changed my perspective on the content that I took in as a child. Mm. Um, it's really sad. I remember everything. I remember the Pickle Boy bits, oh all God. of that stuff. And it's crazy. I'm like, how did they just get away with that? Ray Romano was in the clip, yeah. you know, taking a, a pickle from a a G hole like mm -hmm. that's it's insane. I really cried at the moment that Drake's father um, wow. talked about his realization, um, realizing that it was his son being abused. Mm -hmm. Like that really broke my heart, broke yeah. me down. Um, but all in all, this documentary really showed me the importance of speaking up mm -hmm. because you just continuously heard people saying that they did not want to rock the boat. Yeah. And you have to speak up for important issues like this. When people are being abused, you know, you have to be a, a voice, a voice for the vulnerable. And yeah. um, I really enjoyed this docuseries. I hate that we didn't hear from Amanda Bynes because I think her experience is um, was a really key component in the whole docuseries. Yeah. And yeah, that that's really it. Thank you so much for calling in, JL. Thank you. I think there are certain people in this documentary, especially the most famous ones, um, you're probably not going to hear hear from for whatever reason. I 
didn't expect to hear from Amanda Bynes because, you know, Amanda Bynes, we recently heard of, heard from her on social media. She's trying to get her nail tech um, license and things like that. She, I feel like her world is no longer Nickelodeon and she doesn't want any part of it. So that's why I was surprised, especially when hearing Drake Bell tell his story. I was like, whoa, he is really strong and brave because when he painted the picture of when it first happened to him with Brian Beck and saying that I didn't know how to drive. I didn't feel like I called my mother and then what weight in this house with the man that just abused me. I, he felt uh, hopeless, alone. I felt for him Hel and helpless, hopeless and helpless. Uh, Maggie, thank you so much for the super chat. Maggie says there is an iceberg video about Nick that, that goes way deeper than you think. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. Thank you, uh, Maggie, for the super chat. Rasani, thank you so much for the super chat. Rasani says, if they if they shame women and girls so b badly, imagine how scared the boys and men are. Stop blaming victims. They didn't uh, tempt anyone to to essay them. Okay. Um, DGF, thank you so much for the super chat. DGF says, only education and awareness can thwart predators and mitigate the shame they put on their victims. Thank you to the callers for sharing your stories. Definitely. Thank you, DGF, for the super chat. We appreciate your support. Let's get to these last couple of callers because I got to get out of here. Hold on. All right. Joe Mendoza's backstage. We're going to bring him up next. Joe, what's going on? Not much. I, I, I think it's really heartbreaking to just know that, you know, like th this this happens in a lot of places, right? Yeah. So we, we've, seen, we've seen this docuseries. We, we've seen something similar with gymnastics, with yeah. the you know Larry Nas Nassar situation, mm -hmm. and, and and I think this is one of those things where it just solidifies why I don't want to have a kid, mm -hmm. but also uh, just because even if you know like it you know the, the the blame shouldn't be put on the parents because of other um, extraneous factors. Like to me, if I had a kid, like I wouldn't be able to help but not blame myself. No. Like, so, so I think that's just a hard place to be and being in that dichotomy of wanting to make sure that you support your kid, but at the same time, making sure that they're protected every step of the way. No. But then, you know, those interests that you have for you and your kid as a parent, a lot of times don't align with the employer's um, objectives, right? They want to mm. keep the bottom line. So even if you raise concerns about, hey, have independent monitors or making sure that these things, those are for me. Mm. So and, and, and unless, you know, unless all of these things um, collectively are being raised and raised to the um, executives that, you know, you are taking way more than just a financial, you know, cost um, overhead by doing this, you're, you know, you're and, and, and making sure that that business case for why they need to do it needs to happen. Then, then I don't think the employers are going to do anything, not just in Hollywood, but everywhere else. Mm. Mm. So, just my right. thoughts on that. Thank you so much for calling in, Joe. All right. All right. Let me say thank you. Uh, Scarlett, thank you so much for the super chat. Scarlett says, this is just a reminder that parents need to stop chasing this star Hollywood lifestyle at the expense of their children. That includes the family, child bloggers on TikTok, Instagram, etc. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. God, 10 years from now, are, are we going to have another docuseries on that era? Uh, Rasani, thank you so much for another Super Chat. Rasani says, speaking up, yes, we should. People need to listen and believe as well and not and not say that's not true. There's a lot of victim shaming, victim shaming on social media. I see it all the time. The minute a story comes out, people are already like, why would you wait so long? And blah, 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 blah. And this is part of the reason why a lot of victims do not come out to tell their story. All right. Let me take these last couple of callers. Terry, we're going to bring you up next. Terry, what were your thoughts on this? Hi, Kempire. I'm so glad you're doing this show because you, you only you can do it with the grace and compassion and sympathy that these people deserve. Thank you. Um, being in the community um, and working with children at school, I want people to, to be looking out for th different signs in your child, changes in their sleep pattern, changes in the food they eat, changes in the activities that they used to love but don't want to be involved with anymore mm. those little slight things will add up and there's gonna you you'll find something hopefully that you can help with i'm not saying it would always be an abusive situation but yeah. you know you just they might be getting bullied 
yeah. and things like that. But just pay attention to your children and be mindful of little changes. Mm. It really will make a difference. Definitely, definitely. Mm. Thank you so much, Terry, for sharing that. I'm a longtime fan of yours, and this is my first time calling in. I was just so passionate about this. When I grew up in the 1970s, religion was the was the um, evil with mm. the children. Mm. It's, it's a very passionate subject for me. Yeah. Thank you, Terry, so much for, for sharing. Welcome. You take care. Be you, well and stay strong. You too. Take care. And because of Terry's call, for those that listen to the podcast, I'm going to include the callers because the callers have shared so many personal experiences, so many great um, just information in regards to this quiet on the set uh, documentary, but also just in regards to abuse and children and things like that. So I'm going to include the callers for our podcast version just in case, because, you know, with YouTube, depending on the topics that you talk about, sometimes it won't you won't see it, even if you're subscribed. So. I'm going to make sure that it's at least on the podcast so that you can hear the caller's story. All right. I'm going to bring up Miss Bernice next. What's going on, Miss Bernice? Hey, what up, though, Kimpai? How are you doing I'm today? Well, how are you? Uh, all right. I watched this the two days it came out. I may watch it again because what really infuriated me is when they didn't take it seriously as in if Drake was a Deanna. Hmm. Now, if it was a, a male sexual abuse and a female, it would have been a whole lot of more people on Drake's side mm. when he went into court. But him to go into that court and only have his mother and his brother there, as in he'd been in this business since he was about four or five years old, and there was no one there from the comp from the business, as in Hollywood, to support him. And he look over there and see the whole room is filled on the pedophile side. That was crazy. Nah. And people got to be aware. Wherever there's children there, they're going to be predators. So people have to do their due diligence to be aware of their surroundings and who their kids is. It could be a coach. It could be a teacher. It could be anyone. Mm. So just be aware. And his father was aware of that to try to protect his son. And he wasn't completely able to do it because the predator figured out a way. I'm going to get my prey. I cut mm. out the father. I go mm. through the mother. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Ms. But this, this is very educational and people need to be just being aware. Just, if your feelings tell you something wrong, nine times out of ten, your feelings is right. Mm. Don't be ashamed to try to protect your child, your niece, your nephew, whatsoever. They don't even have to be your child. It could be your neighbor's child. Mm. It doesn't matter. If your spidey senses go off, answer them. Yeah. All right. All right, Miss Bernice. Thank you so okay. much for calling in. Bye bye. Bye. All right. We're gonna take one more caller, guys. Again, shout out to everyone that called in. We can't get to everyone because I literally have to go in like two minutes. All right. We're gonna bring up Lee next. Lee, what were your thoughts on this documentary? Hey, Kim, so sorry I had to drop out and call back in, okay. but I'm a 90s baby and a 2000s kid, so okay. this is really disturbing for me. Um, of course, as a kid, I never saw the, um, you know, Mexual innuendos, but, you know, and now as an adult, I'm like, why is she squeezing a potato and, you know, so forth and so forth. Um, but really, I want to speak on um, Amanda Bynes because she is the darling of my time, you know? Mm. Um, the Amanda, I just want to tell people, everybody always comments underneath her posts, like, you know, I wish you would go back to the way that you were. And, you know, because mm. she doesn't look the same anymore, right? No. She has, like, colorful hair. Mm. She does her makeup differently. She dresses differently. Mm. And I just want everybody to know the Amanda Bynes that we knew before is not no longer here. No. She's no longer present. The Amanda Bynes that we knew was manufactured, right? She mm. wasn't, she was she was produced to be this way. She was always smiling in her pictures. And then, boom, you know, she stopped making movies and she looks different now. It's never going to be the same because she's not the same anymore. Yeah. Dan Snyder produced it, all her shows and movies except for two. And that's when things started to go downhill. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to say that um, we cannot expect these child stars to be the same as they were because most likely they didn't know who they were and mm. to begin with. So now yeah. that they're finding themselves, they look different 
and they're going to present to them, you know, to us differently. So mm. let's just keep that in mind and just pray for healing is all. Definitely. Thank you so much for calling in. No worries. Thank you for letting us speak our minds always. Of bye course. Bye. Take care. I think it's important um, to mention, too, in regards to Amanda Bynes and why she looks so different. She probably intentionally wants to look different because she doesn't want to be reminded of that time. Who knows? I think one of the most important things that we can take from what Lee just said as well is to be mindful of what you post on social media. You don't have to comment on everything. If you have an opinion on something, you can, you can that can be kitchen table talk. You can share that with your family and your friends. Not everything, especially under someone's posts, especially under like, say, Amanda Bynes, you don't have to comment anything there. You can be like, damn, I, I, I wish she would go back and then just keep scrolling. You don't have to comment on everything. Uh, let me just say thank you. We had uh, a super chat. Cozy, thank you so much for the super chat. Cozy says, there's a Teen Vogue article recently published already exposing some of the child bloggers and their parents. It's riveting. The child who did the interview with Teen Vogue kept her name anonymous. Thank you so much for letting us know. We can Google schmoogle that. Thank you so much, Cozy, for the super chat. We appreciate it. And we appreciate everyone calling in and sharing their own personal stories, thoughts, and opinions. We appreciate them. Thank you to our King's Guards, our channel members, our subscribers. We appreciate you guys. If you're part of the Replay crew, be sure to let us know your thoughts on this documentary that came out on Max. You can watch it on Max, quite on set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. It originally was posted on the ID channel as well. You might be able to watch it there still. Let's continue this conversation in the comment section. We appreciate you guys being here. And of course, podcast listeners, we are including the callers because I felt the callers really added a lot to this conversation. So rarely we add the calls, but we will be adding the callers for this uh, podcast version. Thank you all for being here again. Thank you so much for the support. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye, y'all. You make a fire I'll ask you Follow my lead